children from the dead, trampling down death by death, and the of those in the tomb be showing quite a number of years, I think probably well over a decade, and you know, one of the great things about this parish, uh, 
thanks be to God, is that there's never a shortage of people who want to help and do things to help. And so here we were uh, in, in, on our large 24-acre uh, property, and there was a big windstorm, and a number of trees were knocked over, uh, blocking the path that people were supposed to walk on. And so there was a man in the church and his teenage son, and they came out with a chainsaw because that's what they wanted to do, was help the church whatever way they could. So they brought a chainsaw to come help clear the trails. And while they were out here, they found this right here, this tree had split and fallen over. And it was real bushy. And so it was just, just branches everywhere, blocking the trail, blocking everything. And so they came out and they cut it apart and they cleared it out. And I'm up sitting in my office and this kid comes running, this, uh, this, this teenage boy comes running up. Father, 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 we got to talk to you. I said, what is it? What is it? And he says, we found the empty tomb in the woods, father. I said, what? <laughs> We're in Indiana. And he said, you got to come see this, father. You won't believe this. He says, actually, wait a minute. Just wait. Just wait until we're all done. I'm so excited. I can't wait for you to see this. <clears throat> so, of course, he piqued my interest. And so when they finished up, they spent the whole day working on it. And uh, they chipped some wood. And, I mean, it was just beautiful. I, they, they brought me down here, and I looked. And sure enough, it does. It really looks like you've got this cave. Uh, and and this, the door of the cave, not quite a circle rolled away, but the door of the cave moved away, you know. Um, so it's an icon. It's an icon of the empty tomb. And um, we use it as such, and we're very, very grateful for it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, you know, when we talk about praising God uh, in the sanctuary, we also recognize that all of creation is like God's church. So we do have the church uh, up there, a little up the hill where we go and we pray and we, we, we worship together. Um, but then there's everywhere else. It's all, it all belongs to God. It's all his creation. And um, I love the stories that I heard about some of the saints who were hermits, who um, when, you know, they were in the Paschal season and they weren't living in a monastery, they were out by themselves somewhere. And uh, on Pascha and throughout the Paschal season, they would go out and they would yell to the trees and the rocks, Christ is risen, because they had to proclaim the glorious message. And the, 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 the stories that I really love uh, are the ones where sometimes the trees answer back. <laughs> uh, so anyway... I love, uh, I love all the, the, the stories of the church. They're edifying and, and glorious to God. So a blessed Paschal feast to all of you on this um, Pascha Sunday. And uh, I pray that you have a good feast both today and this week and throughout the Paschal season. And look forward to us being together again in person. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Amen.